The beautiful game at its best. The sun on your back, the ball at your feet, playing with people you've grown up with. But the girls at Reading are also competing to be the best, with aspirations to play professionally for the club's Women's Super League side when they're older. 14-year-old striker Emma has played for Reading since she was eight, and football is a passion that has gripped her since nursery school. My first goal, I remember scoring it for my first ever little boys team on a Saturday. Um, I scored my, it was only a tap-in, but my celebration, I ran around the field about two times and people were just looking at me thinking, what are you doing? But it was like really special for me. After winning Manager's Player of the Season last year, the signs are there that this could be her moment to really kick on. Professional players will often point to a season when they made their breakthrough. Could this be the year that Emma one day looks back on? It all began on a sunny Monday morning in half term. I got a phone call whilst I was at work and um, she thought she was going to go and watch and we'd arranged for her to go with somebody else to go and watch because I was at work um, and I just uh, text her originally, initially, and said you need to get up because <laughs> she she has a tendency to lay in bed on the days off. And I said you need to get up and get ready, and she said why? And I said well because you're going to be training with the first team today. And she went I can't, and it wasn't anything to do with football related. She just she couldn't think that she'd get her hair done in time. I wasn't expecting it at all. It was just one morning, I, my dad was like, oh Emma, you're going to train with the first team today. I went, oh brilliant. So I, I just took it by the, literally by the scruff of the neck and was like, well, I'll do my best to see what happens. I came back after that training session telling my dad I scored two goals against Mary Earps and Mandy Vandenberg, who's the Netherlands captain. And again, to have that experience and memory of doing that at a training session when everyone was watching, it just everlasting. Obviously for her own age group she's been a standout player for a number of years but to see her playing with the Reading first team or even the development team, she's playing with fully fledged internationals that we've paid money to go and watch so it's quite surreal watching that. When I was little I always dreamt of playing for England and that's that was my main dream but now I've got older, like playing for Reading's first team is such an achievement and to do that as a job as well, it, it would just be incredible because it's something that I love to do. So just playing for the women's first team and representing them after I've played for them for so many years and playing for England is just another bonus. It's, it would be incredible to do that too. If she can achieve being her dream of being a first team player, then that's fantastic. Um, we try and encourage her to study as well so that she can have something to fall back on but it will be a good job if she can do it. The players that normally are the ones that make it are the ones that have the most desire and willingness to do more outside of what they do here so for instance the under 16s they only train twice a week so it's really important for them that they do stuff away from here to make sure that they're on top if they need to go and progress further so that's a that's a real big factor the desire and hard work is is massive. It's the biggest thing that makes up a footballer. If you don't train, you can't achieve the goals that you want to be. You have to train a majority of the days to be stronger, quicker, fitter, and without that, you, I wouldn't be where I am today. We understand players can push themselves in different ways, um, but we have to make sure that they're doing more than enough, either in the session or, or for their own kind of body. So. For instance, when the girls do the running, some of them run at different distances, but some of them can run further than others. But as long as they're pushing themselves to their maximum every single session, that's all we ask for. 
So that's that's a really important thing for us at there desire and hard work for, for their own body is, is pushed to the limit. After the under-16 side, the next step for Emma on the road to being a professional footballer is the John Majewski Academy and she will need to take her work ethic with her to this competitive environment, which current elite student Georgia knows all about. We kind of all compete within JMA, even though we're all like a team and we work together. We're always like battling out on the pitch, like if we have to earn our right to play, which we do, which is really good because then it relates to when we get older and we develop more. That's how it'll be when we grow up to go into women's football. But even at 14, Emma's commitment is already bringing success and recent impressive performances have brought a call up to the national school's setup. A training camp in Portugal is quickly followed by a friendly match in Ireland, and her dad flew out to see her play in the narrow 2-1 defeat. Did he say anything to you afterwards? He just said, I'm very proud of you. Um, obviously we lost the game, so I was a bit upset, but he, he was like, you played your best and that's all you could have done. Um, the manager of my team came up to me and was like, you were definitely my man of the match today. Um, you, you've played amazing today. And I also got given vice captaincy for the team, so I got the armband in the second half because the captain's the goalkeeper. So again, having that extra bit of having a role as a captain was just incredible, and especially for my parents to see that, it they overwhelming for them. There's no let up in the intense schedule though, as Emma needs to get ready for a training session less than a day after getting back. You've got training tonight. Mm -hmm. How are you feeling? Uh, quite tired as I've got back at 11 o'clock last night, but I feel okay, just dreading the running, but I should be fine. Three, four, Fortunately for Emma and fellow National Schools player Emily, Reading have prepared something a little different for them. Two, three. The rest of the girls will be doing around 75 metres, uh, eight repetitions, 15 seconds to get their 15 second rest and then do two sets. For those girls it's quite difficult because they, they had a game yesterday so for them to do that today would be too much to ask for them and we want to allow their muscles to recover adequately so we tend to actually have a separate thing for them and it's a short, sharp, quick movement just to get them their legs going a bit more and just make it a bit easier for them. Emma needs to keep working hard. Despite the approaching Easter holidays she won't have time for much rest as she has once again been called up to the national school side to play in a tournament in Ireland. However, her dad received an email that changes her plans completely. So the email um, basically is from the FA and it says selected women's under 15 training camp and matches the 11th to the 15th of April in Belgium. I sent her a text um, earlier today and um, she basically sent me a text back saying dad I'm crying. I got a bit emotional because it's my dream since I was little um, I'm just very happy and quite privileged to have that opportunity and just very excited for April to come. Just playing for Reading is an achievement in itself and again playing for England is an extra step and having other coaches value what you do on the pitch and off the pitch because it's not all about on the pitch it's just incredible for me to have that opportunity. As a parent, you always feel that your children are great. It's nice when they get recognition from others. So it was great when she got recognition from Reading. It was amazing to get recognition at international level. We've got pictures of her in her England kit when she was about five or six, and it'd be quite strange seeing her in her England kit sort of nine years later. Whatever the feeling may be, today is the first time Emma will be able to wear her England kit after the tracksuit arrives in the post. You've got the England tracksuit in your hands now. Does it feel like it's actually becoming a bit of a reality? Yeah, it's just going to be an incredible experience and especially representing my country with that badge on your chest and on your tracksuit bottoms, it's just going to be incredible. It's now Easter and with the form signed and the information pack studied, it's just a matter of packing the bags and getting ready to leave. What is it you're most looking forward to when you get out there? Um, just really just getting my international cap and just to see how, like, make myself proud and make my family proud and just really see 
like how well I can do out there, especially in a different country. Are you looking forward to meeting all the other players? Yeah, it's going to be a brilliant experience and they're all going to be so talented and I'm pretty sure they're all going to be such a nice bunch of girls, so yeah, I'm really excited. Uh, you've just got your tracksuit, but yeah. have you found out your squad number yet? No, I haven't. Um, I don't really have a preference, but as a striker you kind of want to be number 9 or 10 or 11. So maybe one of those three, but I don't mind. And after a quick snap for the family album, it's time for Emma to leave for Belgium. And whilst there's some nerves, the overwhelming feeling is excitement in anticipation of what the future may hold. I'm really excited for what the future uh, will bring for me and see what opportunities I can get in the future and I'm really hoping that I can achieve my dream which will be playing for a senior in England.